All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rubia. Hope you are all well today. So a different video entirely. We're going to be doing a mix breakdown of a track I just put out called Aggie Bass, which was to show off the Get Good Drums library, Aggressive Rock, One Kit Wonders. So we're going to take a look at this mix because I got loads of requests to do that, and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, but I have been quite apprehensive to do so for one reason, and that is that anybody watching this video that knows what they're talking about, whether it be mixing or producing or anything like that, uh, there'll probably be things in here where you're like, what on earth is that? That's completely the wrong way to do it. And the reason is that I've, you know, other than seeing Dave mix stuff and working with Dave and uh, Mark Roberts, I've never had any education on mixing or anything like that. I just picked up tips from those guys and, you know, just watched over the years. And I'm really passionate about it. It's something I've been putting a lot of time into over the last few years. Uh, and I really want to get good at it because it's awesome and it's loads of fun. Um, but yeah, I'm just giving you that caveat now because there'll be guys watching this and going, yeah, that's not how. You, that's not way you're supposed to use that or whatever. And I'm sorry, um, but I've managed to get it to sound pretty good, I think, to me. We're just going to take a look at this mix and go over all the steps that I've taken to get it to sound the way I did. And hopefully some of it is useful, some of it might not be, but we'll see. We'll see. So this is my arrangement window for the track, and uh, I use Logic as my DAW. Um, I've always used it just since I got into mixing. This is what I had available to me, and I think it's great. Uh, but anyway, let's take a quick listen to a bit of the track and then we'll sort of get involved. So you get the idea, it's a, just a, a really aggressive tr sounding track, obviously for the aggressive rock drum library, it just had to be fat. Um, so really quickly, what we've got going on, as you can see, this is my drums, and then I've got a few automation lanes of stuff happening like room mics and snare reverbs, and you can see a bit of guitar here, there's automation going on all over the place basically. Uh, automation is super useful, it's basically like a digital version of like uh, sliders on a mixing desk, or at least that's what I think it is. Anyway. Uh, then I've got my guitars. So this is my main rhythm tracks. I used the Quad Cortex from your DSP. I captured my Krakens and used those uh, for this track. So I've got my two main guitars here. I've got a thickener here. We'll listen to that. And then I've got some layers, layers, layers. And then finally uh, my bass. And then I've got a rhythm guitar track here that you can see when I bring in the lead, I just pull it down a little bit. But anyway, yeah, so that's the general gist. That's literally the arrangement there. And then this is my mixer window. So I like to do what a lot of guys talk about. Nolly does that, Misha does that. This is top-down mixing, which is where you've got your master bus and you mix into it with all your stuff already there because it's like a preset. So uh, that's what I've learned to do and it's lots of fun. Uh, again, my master bus is made up of things that I think sound good, which I actually don't know if I'm doing it the right way, but we'll get into all of that. Anyway, so let's have a quick listen to things in isolation. Firstly, we'll take a listen to the drums. So let me just give you them. Uh, by themselves. Actually, to show you what I'm doing first, I've got a bunch of EQs here. So let me just solo the drums. We'll have a quick listen to what's happening here. So here we go. So that's the sound of the kit. Obviously I'm using the One Kit Wonders aggressive rock library, as I said, and it's worth saying that this is supposed to be mixed straight out of the box, which it is, of course. You could just use this straight out of the box and it would sound great. Uh, but I like to do, with all my sort of um, recordings that I do at home, I like to spit out all of my drums onto individual tracks in Logic, just because then I've got more control. And even though that's not what this library is aimed at, you can still do that, so that's what I've done. Um, I know Misha does the same thing. I just find it's more realistic for the way I like to mix. Um, but anyway, these are the drums, snare, toms, kick, and these great. It's a great sounding library, um, just fat. The snare, really powerful. Actually took a lot of low end out of this snare because it was, it was quite beefy, which is great. But um, anyway, then you've got these parallel uh, compression master EQ which I've both I've got engaged on those and it is worth saying that I played in the drums for this track obviously not all the intense double bass because I can't but I always map my electric kit to uh, GGD and then play in the essential grooves and all the parts that I want 
specifically. I just find it easier than going in and actually drawing in the uh, MIDI notation. It's it's way longer that way around, so I prefer to play it in. Um, but anyway, yeah, let me carry on. Let me let's have a listen to some of these drums, and then I'll show you what I've actually done to them. If I actually take off the parallel and master EQ, this is how they sound. Put them back on. So it just brings out a little more life in them. Um, again, I'm kind of doing a lot of stuff that's sort of counterintuitive to the way the, the library was designed, but I think it sounds better for it, for my mix here. Um, but anyway, so in terms of what I'm doing to each of the drums, uh, let me just solo these as well so you can kind of listen in. We'll get rid of all this stuff. So basically what I do is I send them all, I select the outputs of all my drums to uh, a bus, so I sum them all to one channel, which is this one here. Uh, and then I do a general kind of a little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ to all the drums. But on top of that, so that's all the drums. In, so the output of the drums is this one channel here. So even if I took solo off and you just heard the drum bus, it would be all the drums, these channels here, as you can see. But then on top of that, I, I send them to different places. So each of them here, I send to a parallel compression bus. Then I also send them to another slammed compression bus called uh, the Decapitator from Sound Toys. Um, and then I've also sent the snare here to an extra snare reverb. So this is the uh, parallel compression bus. And I'm using Smash and Grab, of course, from GGD. Generally speaking, I've love smash and grab I use it on all my recordings I basically for my drums as you can see I just use uh, Pro Q uh, 3 from Fad Filter for my EQs and then I just put smash and grab on but I usually use them a bit heavier uh, heavier in other mixes but in this because the drum library is already pre-mixed for the most part like I just I've just been doing very minor EQ tweaks and a little bit of extra compression on things like the room stuff like that um, but yeah, really simple, just EQ and then smash and grab for the most part, and then these sends, of course. And that's all I really do to the drums that I get from GGD because they sound so good. Um, but anyway, so that's the parallel compression bus, as you could hear it. If I blend, if I play that alongside the main drum bus, you'll hear how much more weight you get. So it brings out all the power there for me. And then the decapitator bus, which is just a bit more of an aggressive sound on the drums. But obviously it's gonna sound weird because I'm mainly sending a snare here and then everything else is a bit quieter. Just wanna get a bit of hair on the snare, a bit extra like dirt. If I blend it in. So you can hear it adds a little bit extra weight to everything. And then on top of that, I've got a snare reverb just on the snare uh, here. And I'm using Realverb Pro, uh, Universal Audio plugin. And you can, re you can change the materials and shape of the room. And it's really complex plugin. <laughs> I use it quite basic. I sort of found a preset that sounded close to what I was after and then just tweaked around until it sounded how I wanted it to. This is the snare reverb. In with the drums. When you take it out, you just lose a little bit of extra oomph, you know, because I've put a, I've also got uh, EQ on there, but uh, taking out some notches and stuff. Then I've got smash and grab to compress it, and then an envelope filter, enveloper, sorry, that um, basically delays that sort of bl bloom from the snare. So behind the main snare, it gives just a bit of extra sort of opening. So if I play it in the mix and mute that snare reverb, so. So 
so you can hear it actually makes a nice amount of difference there um basically that's all i've really done to the drums is i'm just sort of comp i'm doing parallel compression and then another bus of like smashing the snare just to get a bit more aggression out of it and then a snare reverb on top of what's already there um and just it's a mine i guess the way i'd I guess the way that I describe that is just like small amounts of compression and EQ in different areas to bring it together to sound like that. Um, it's worth saying that on the room mic, the actual room mic that you get uh, with the GGD library, I've EQ'd it, I've smashed it, uh, really smashed it. And then I've also added Soothe, which is uh, a plugin by Oryx Sound, which essentially uh, smoothens out harshness. So let me show you the room uh, without it. And then with it, it's really subtle, but it just helps. It's really, really subtle, but it just gets rid of that intensity. I also run that on the master bus as well, uh, across the whole mix. Um, so that would be the drums. Now, if we move on to the guitars, let me just solo uh, the rhythm guitars. So what I'm gonna do is show you these without Obviously, when you're tracking guitars, usually you then have to add a brightness and everything like that so they fit in the mix, uh, which always pains me to do because they always sound harsher in isolation than they did when you tracked them in. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take off everything that I've added so that you can just hear them on their own as they were tracked in. So yeah, this is just the raw input source guitar tone from Quad Cortex. Sounds pretty good, and then... Sound really nice to me, uh, as is. Um, but then what I do on the individual left and right channel is I add reverb. Again, I've set the outputs of those guitars to a guitar bus, which is the rhythm. <laughs> I don't know why I named it that. I was thinking I was just in a mode. Uh, anyway. Um, then on this channel, on this guitar bus, I use EQ. As you can see, loads of brightening, which I just didn't want to do, but you have to really, if you want to get it to sit nicely with everything else. So. Much brighter, I've taken some low mid out, bit of mid range there, a boost around 3K and I've taken four and a half out basically just trying to carve so that you can hear all the um, articulation along alongside the symbols and things like that uh, and also to accommodate things like bass you know so when you pull out certain mid-range frequencies bass can poke through um, but yeah that's what it sounds like with the so yeah and then I compress it with a Empirical Labs Fatso plugin um, from Universal Audio, so this is without it. And then with. So it really brings out the intense brightness there. And then I use a multiband compressor around the um, sort of low mid range of my guitar and just use that band to compress the chugs so it's a little tighter. Finally, I use UAD Precision K Stereo, which is like a, a stereo widener. Just pushes the guitars outwardly a bit, so I like the way it sounds. So let me show you what it sounds like without. And with. So yeah, that's basically what I've done to the guitars to get them to sit with um, the drums. It really sounds harsh in, in isolation, but that's just what I've had to do um, to get it to sound the way it does. So if I play the drums and then put the guitar in, uh, sorry, this way around, I'll put the, uh, the drums in afterwards. So 
suddenly that really harsh, intense brightness from the guitars doesn't sound as horrible because it's sat in there with the drums. And that was for me to be able to get those like aggressive chugs. You can hear the pick attack. It was just getting lost. Um, so that's what I had to do. Uh, again, all of this stuff that I'm doing, I have no idea if that's the right way to do it. Just so you know, I'm, I'm like bits of knowledge, real, real gaps in my knowledge here. But anyway, that's that. Uh, I may as well show you some of the uh, layers that I added. So these are the main guitars again, and I'm going to show you what this, this layer is. Um, so here we go. It's like a thickener to go alongside with octave. In fact, what I'm going to do is take off all the effects that I added first. So this is, it sounds like as is. So it's like a thickener. Uh, if I play it alongside the other guitars, So you can hear it thick, thickens things up a little bit, but then I added the decapitator and absolutely destroyed this guitar channel. So let me show you. Um. Like really crushed and just destroyed it, took out loads of high end. Uh, I wanted it to just be like an aggressive thing that you hear poke through the main guitar channel. And then I added again a precision, the the precision wide stereo plugin. So then with those two on, this is the main guitar without it, and then I'll add it in. So as you can hear, it just fattens things up a little bit. Um, again, I like doing that. Generally, I'll do left and right guitars and then I'll add uh, like a really quiet sort of octave guitar in the middle, just to fatten things out. Personally, like doing that. Um, what else we got? Let me show you the bass then. Uh, so this is the bass. Now, bass is probably my weakest area in terms of how I... May as well take the tuner plug in off. We don't need that anymore. Um, yeah, I find bass really hard to to engineer and mix and stuff like that. So this is what I generally do um, for all my bass uh, recordings. So I start with Parallax, which is the main bass. To, I mean, behind Parallax is just DI. And I use uh, Dave's fan fret bass. So this is Parallax on. I started with a preset, a Forrester Savile preset called Bass Riffs, and then I tweak from there. Uh, it's a great preset. So then on top of that, I added, uh, as you can see, a similar, uh, I boosted a similar area to where I cut on the guitars to get it to, to poke through, but this is the EQ. And then I add a uh, distressor and absolutely smash it. I don't want any dynamic in this bass. It just has to be just to the, you know, like absolute brick wall bass, just because any dynamic isn't welcome in this track. Uh, then I add a, a side chain compressor to the kick. Uh, so that allows the kick to cut through. Um, so this is it. Yeah, here you go. See, they sound a little more to like glued together, which I don't want. I want the separation there. Um, so if I turn it back on, you'll hear the kick just suddenly cuts a bit more. So that's really nice. That's a great uh, tip that I learned um, off Dave. Obviously, it's a well-known tip, but I didn't know it. And Dave was like, yeah, you should sign chain your bass to your kick drum so that in aggressive music, you can really hear the kick come through. Um, it really works. I love it. And then after the fact, I add a Waves plugin called R-Bass, and that essentially is just, 
it gives like almost like a digital sine wave support to any base that you're using. I'm, I think, I don't really know how it works, but I have it running really low, like minus 20, uh, around 80 hertz, and it just gives the bass some support. So this is it uh, without, and I'll add it in. It just, it just adds thickness there. Next, we've got layers. So over the chorus, this section here, So the layers that you can hear happening there are And then after that, it breaks out into the ending riff. And what you can hear happening over the main riff is this. A little sugar thing. But I like that so quiet because it is very common in the kind of sugar. You hear it a lot in their albums, that kind of uh, raising half-hold half diminished vibe. But I just sank it really low and panned it to one side so that it's creating tension without you really hearing it before it drops into the big, chubby halftime section. So right at the end there, you'll hear it sort of, sort of creeping up here, like... So yeah, basically that's all the elements of the mix uh, happening individually and yeah, really in terms of the mixing side of it, it's kind of simple because I don't really know loads of advanced techniques with stuff and a lot of it I'm probably, you know, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right, but in terms of like the guitars, for example, the main rhythm tracks as you've seen, I've added the brightness and stuff, but any layers I'm cutting out loads of uh, low end and stuff because they don't need any of that information. You can see there's like really not a lot happening. If I take the EQ off. It's like weird sounding, it really, that everything clashes, but when it's on its own. Things like the, the lead, I've really just got a boost of around 1650, as you can see, a bit of sort of mid-range. Same thing again, I'm using the Fatso here, um, compress it, sit it in with the other guitars, and then I'm using the wide note once again. And I've also got a separate verb bus, uh, which is the UAD Capital Chambers, an incredible reverb plugin. And then I'm EQing it. This is without the EQ. But it was too much, so I take that out. Basically what I'm doing there is just carving again with EQ uh, and then compressing so that everything glues at the end and I'm probably doing more than I need to but it just you know you keep tweaking till you think that sounds that good that sounds good that sounds good and then you sort of decide to leave it <laughs> uh, when you think that you've done it all you can with it. Uh, I never finish a mix going I'm happy with that I always finish it going I don't think I can get this sounding any better that's kind of how I 
end up with my mixes. Uh, right, let's look at the master bus. So let me take everything off. This is how it sounds. This is going to be funny. So you can hear it's quite lifeless. Basically what I do on my master bus is a series of compression and EQ and saturation, um, probably beyond the point that I should, but I'm trying to get it to sound as fat as I can with the only way I know how, so I can, this is how I'm doing it. But as you heard, that's everything sounds reasonably well balanced, I'd say, um, as is, um, but just lacks, lacks a bit of life, a bit of oomph. So we'll go for each one, starting with my Shadow Hills mastering compressor. I love this thing. It looks amazing as well. The real thing is about seven grand. Uh, but anyway, this is how it sounds. already making it sound cool uh, and then next up is a really cool plugin I got off the plugin Alliance now this is where I also create a lot of problems for myself because it's a it's like a saturator compressor thing and it usually messes with my guitar recordings which is why you can hear this they probably are a little more intense in the brightness but it's worked for this mix uh, I've had to I've had to take it away in some mixes um, because it's just started to ruin the sound of the guitars a bit um, but it sounds so good on the master. Uh, it just fattens everything up. As you can see, I used a preset called Rock Anarchy uh, <laughs> and then sort of mess with it a bit after that. So let's have a listen. It does a lot to the mix, you know. You've got an air control, which is really cool. Uh, loads of stuff like that. And you can access different areas of the mix and really mess with it, like we've got the old tube circuit in and then the air, so if I take those off. I mean, it's already sounding pretty fiery with those two, but then I add some master EQ uh, after the fact of the compressor, which isn't what you normally do, I, I know, but then I add more compression <laughs> before we get to the limo. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is a really good one. This is uh, the Dangerous Backs EQ, and I'm punching a lot of 115 in there, and then I'm punching a lot of uh, 18K right at the top of the mix. Uh, this is without it, and then I'll put it in. I mean, to be fair, I could back off that, that low end a little bit. But anyway, I don't want to mess with this too much. I just wanted to show you as is. Now the next plugin I use is Waves EQ. It's the API 550. And it's a preset that ages ago when Nolly came over, he was messing with my master bus and he just did this. And I've kind of just always used it because it sounds, it just adds, it opens up the mix. So I've just kept it as it is, but this is without it. So now everything sounds really aggressive in a really good way. Um, but this is where I then add the tape. Uh, it's the UAD Studio A800 plugin. And this is kind of like just tape on everything to soften it a bit. And I actually attenuate it quite a bit. So this is, um, I'm pushing the input to glue everything a bit more. This is like the compression, uh, the all that EQ and stuff you heard. And then furthermore to sort of tie it all together. Uh, so this is without it. So as you can hear, it just gives that tape warmth. It's obviously I'm attenuating it, so it's getting quieter, but at the same time, everything's got a bit more air around it almost. It just feels a little bit more real, if that makes sense. So without it. It does something really nice to the kick. You get to hear like the sub of the kick in its own way, just like blooming away. Like I really like that. Now, this is uh, my EQ, and this is something I learned off Misha's latest mix breakdown that he does. Um, and I actually tried it out and think it sounds pretty good. 
So this is using Pro-Q3 and then I've created a couple of different things here. So you can change the mode that the EQ acts under. So firstly, I've got my low end, I'm taking out of the sort of stereo image, I believe. So it's just low end is mono, be anything below sort of 30 where we don't need it to mess anything up. And then next up, I've got um, a low cut at 130. So I'm sending things to the side. So let me show you what it sounds like. Anything below that is not going to the sides anymore. Anything below that, you can't really hear it, but it's just not being used. And then we've got in the middle, which I'm pushing to the sides, is some mid-range at around 850. Now this is just widening the image a little bit where the guitars are, so let me take it off so you can hear it. just widening the guitars a little bit more and then we're right at the top end here doing the same thing it's just it's a really cool little thing that i saw him doing on his mix breakdown so i thought i'd give it a go and i think it sounds good on this but the cool thing is if, if you're not happy you just turn it off but i think it sounds nice for this and then I'm using another instance of Soothe too. Uh, and this is a master preset that I then again tweaked a little bit. And this just smoothens out everything in the top of this mix. So as you can hear, I'll solo it so you can hear what it's actually doing. But So it's smoothening out all that stuff in the guitars and cymbals there. right at the top some of the harsh cymbal stuff it's, it's getting rid of and then any flubby low mid <laughs> yeah like it was a little bit high should be around 140 hertz it's just the really flubby low end it's going to sort of help me with that And then finally, uh, JST clip, Joey Sturgis Tones uh, clip, which is a, a limiter. I used to use the Waves one, but I just, we use this on the Tosca record um, and it just brings out something really nice in the guitars. It just fattens everything up. Uh, so let me show you what it sounds like. And that would be, I guess, the entire mix. Like, um, again, my master bus, I'm just kind of, I'm always messing with it, trying to work out what I'm doing that's actually benefiting it and what I'm doing that's making it worse. Um, but overall, this mix is meant to be really aggressive, absolutely smashed with compression. I was trying to be sort of genre specific on that, like a lot of the big records, you know, you got these big blooming drum sounds and really thick, everything's well produced you know so i was trying to go for that kind of vibe i probably wouldn't smash my mixes quite as much as this and also i have more flexibility over my drum library and drum sounds than i do in here because i've had to mess with some things uh, as you can see in the automation uh, because i have the room going here like and i didn't want to use it in the uh verses because it was making things too messy so you pull the room down <laughs> Like if I, that's at 17.4, if I put it back in. Yeah, so with automation, it's one of my favorite parts of mixing because that's where you get creative. As you can see, where you want to pull certain things out of the mix or you, can, you don't have to just automate volume, you can do panning, you can do effects, sends, you can do all sorts of stuff like in any DAW it allows you to do that. And I really love it because you get really creative. It's like you've got the mixing desk in front of you and you can move the faders around as you want. So like there are little jumps in volumes and places like that, like what we got here. So I really wanted to pull out the chord change there, so I turned the volume up on that major turnaround, that major change there. So 
If I turn it up even more to accentuate it more. So it's subtle because I don't like to really push uh, a lot of layers because I kind of had that philosophy of like, if you can do it live, it, your record should represent that. And sometimes when you've got loads of guitar layers doing stuff, it can be a little bit misleading as to what the band actually sound like. Although this is just a demo, so I don't need to follow those rules quite so much. But um, yeah, again, I'm always tweaking. I'm always trying to mess around with stuff, trying to make it sound better or worse. And I've already signed off this mix. Um, well, I've been mixing since I signed it off for uh, Grinding Gears because I was happy with the way it sounded and I was tweaking further and decided to shoot this video. So there you go, there is my first ever mix breakdown video and I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that it shed some light on how I'm doing things and again, sorry to all those guys that know what they're doing and went, this is total, like, I you've no idea what you're doing or whatever. Um, but I enjoyed it and I think it sounds cool for what it is and any of you guys that are wanting to get into mixing I honestly recommend it. It's loads of fun. It's a great way to understand sound and appreciate records that are in genres of music you don't listen to uh, for the way they're recorded, all that kind of stuff. It, it's a whole other universe of things to get involved in. It's, it's loads of fun and I just want to keep getting better at it. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it didn't sound too bad. And if you want to see more of this kind of thing, I will attempt to do that with other songs. Recommendations in the comment section would be really appreciated. And of course, anybody that knows about this kind of stuff and wants to give me some pointers, please do so in the comment section. And uh, and yeah, basically any tips, anything you want to talk about with regards to what you've seen here today, comment section, we'll discuss it. Uh, but as always, thank you for watching this video. Like, subscribe and share. I've been Rabia and I will see you all very soon.